Hey guys, my name is Fun Toro. You guys may be wondering, how do you, as a player, buff or nerf champions in League of Legends? And the answer to that question is champion synergies and interactions. You might be familiar with some synergies that exist in the game, such as Yasuo and Gragas. Gragas can enhance Yasuo by giving him more opportunities with his ultimate using his knockups. Well, there are some synergies that you just might not know of. In this video, I will show you 10 synergies or interactions that can buff or nerf champions in League of Legends. And before we start, make sure to check my Twitch channel out at twitch.tv slash funporo. Link will be in the description. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hope you enjoy. First up on our list, we have Senna and or Resilient with the Scion. Sen's W is a Ruta Blade, in that the way it works is that you can throw her W onto a target, and if the target dies, the root effect is applied. The root can also be applied when a certain duration passes, and if we use this certain mechanism on her W, we can use Scion to increase the effectiveness and value of Sen's root ability. Scion can use his E ability to knock back a main or a non-epic monster in a certain direction. This means that Sen can throw her W onto a non-epic monster, such as a Skull Crab, or a minion, and if Scion aims properly and times it properly, you can increase the range of Senna's root, therefore buffing the champion. The same fundamental principle can be applied with Zillion. Zillion's Q can do more da or can do damage when the target with the Q on it dies, or if a certain duration passes. Scion again just needs to aim it and time it properly. And the cool thing is that Scion can work with Senna pretty well. Currently, the way people play Senna is that Senna is like doing a fasting Senna, where Senna is paired with a support like Tom Kench or another traditional support, and the support will take the form and Senna is going to gather the souls. And the cool thing is that for the support, like if Scion, being a melee, goes up against ranged targets, Senna can provide sustain with her Q. And also, Scion gets tankier when he kills an enemy and he gains maximum health due to his W passive. Find this with a sustain, laning shouldn't be that hard of a time. There are also many different permutations and combinations that can be picked for these champions. You can have Senna sign on bot with Zillion mid, you can have Senna sign on the bot lane with a sign on the top lane. There's so many different versions where you can uh, play around with, but the only difference is, is that the amount of value and effectiveness you'll get from these champions will vary. When Scion's in the bot lane, he can increase the amount of roots you can have, or if you're pairing with the Zillion, you can have more damage. And Stuns. There's so much utility, damage, and poke that can gather from these champions when combined together all in the same game. Number two on the list, we have Orn, Poppy, and Bane. The question is, what do these three champions have in common? All these champions have an ability that interact with terrain. Like you have Orn E when he goes into terrain, he'll knock up a target if he's in like the area of effect. You have Poppy who can like dash with the target into a wall, and the target will be stunned. Same with Bane where Bane can condemn a target into a wall and the target will be stunned. However, the problem with this is that the enemy has to be near a wall, and sometimes the enemy's not in always a good position for crowd control to take place. So this is why we have to pair a champion who can provide terrain, such as Trundle, Anivia, Jarvan, Azir, and even Talia. These five champions have terrain built into their kits. There is Trundle Pillar, Anivia Wall, Jarvan Ult, Azir Ultimate, and Talia Ult. So when Orn uses Z, he'll knock them up. And also, the cool thing is with all uh, these abilities with the terrain, is they can be placed anywhere. So you can create crowd control from pretty much anywhere. So all these champions, Orn, Poppy, Vayne, even Kiana, can gain more value. Next we have on our list is something that you already might be familiar with, and that is Rangar Ivern. Rangar's passive allows him to gain a leap from his base attacks when he's in a bush. But one problem is, is that on Summoner's Rift or Howling Abyss or any other map, the amount of bushes that you have to work with are limited. And the way to so like, sort of fix this problem is that we pick Ivern, because Ivern's W provides bushes. Ivern's Q can also provide a root, and also, if his allies are in range of that, they can dash to the target that is rooted, giving Rangar an additional gap closer as well as his teammates. The next synergy might be a synergy that you're not familiar with, and that is Caitlyn Ivern. Caitlyn's passive allows her base attacks to provide a stack of headshot, and when she has max stacks, her next attack will do more damage. The interesting thing here is that when Caitlyn's autoing 
from inside a bush, the ability to generate these stacks are doubled, therefore increasing the amount of damage you have because you have more auto attacks which are enhanced. And to add to that, Ivern's also a really good support. He already builds support, and he has shields to protect the AD carry or another target from burst, has Q to provide good CC, so that when you roots the target, Kaelin can also provide a trap and do more damage that way as well, and his ult will also provide crowd control. And since Ivern goes more of a support route, goes more of an enchanter approach, he doesn't need much gold to gain a lot of value from him. The next synergy that we have on the list is Mastery Target. So this has been seen before in like funneling strategies, but it doesn't have to be funnel. You can have both these champions in the game and play normally. Mastery E can become a late game monster when he gets all his items, gets fed and all that. But the problem is that when he goes in, like he can get CC chain or he can just get insta-bursted and then just die and then one of your winning factors in Mastery E is just dead. So the way that we can fix this problem is add a Tarek to the mix. So Tarek's ult makes him and someone else invulnerable. And if other people are in the area of effect, they'll all become invulnerable. So that when Master Yi goes in, he can get CC chained, but he won't get insta bursted after that. And also to add, Tarek provides a lot of healing, shielding, and good crowd control to support Master Yi. So the next one might not be considered a good synergy, but is an interaction that can nerf a champion. And that one is Syndra into Zyra. So one of Zyra's main defining properties is her plants. Zyra likes to place her plants in certain locations so that they are in the most optimal position to do more damage and also provide some crowd control. And the thing with Syndra is that her W can pick up targets like minions and throw them away and also do damage. And Syndra can do the same thing to Zyra Plant. Syndra can W the Zyra Plant, throw them away so that they're in less optimal position, and also do damage at the same time. And you can have Syndra versus Zyra in the mid lane if that situation comes up, but you can also have Syndra in the bottom lane as an APC or an ability power carry, um, going up against the Zyra support or if it's a Zyra also ability power carry. Next we have Cassiopeia with Teemo. Cassio's main damage ability is her E, and the way that it does more damage is that if the target's poison, her E will just do more damage. And the way that Cassio usually applies her poison is through her Q and W. The problem is, is that her Q and W do a lot less damage than her E, and since her E does the most damage, or that's where all her damage is coming from, she'll just be doing less damage, because she has to first use her Q and W, and you're just doing less damage to E. So this is where you add Teemo. Teemo's E passive, has a poison on his basic attacks. His basic attacks will do bonus magic damage and inflict poison, so that when Teemo autos a champion or a target, Cassio's E can be instantly propped and do more damage. Next we have Kogma and Lulu. So Kogma is considered a hyper carry. He can melt targets when he gets his items and levels. And you combine this with a Lulu who can provide additional attack speed, gives you her W, she can also shield Kogma, and her ultimate can provide a knockup, and her Q can also provide slows, and combine that maybe with unflinching, you can also potentially heal the uh, Torio. And this duo is a very overpowered combo, because like, Lulu can also do more magic damage with the Kogma when she applies her abilities. Number 9 on the list is Rise Nunu. Nunu's ultimate can do a lot of damage and provide a big slow, but the problem is, is that Nunu's ultimate makes him stationary, so he can't move. However, add a Rise to the mix, and Nunu's ultimate doesn't truly make him stationary anymore. Rise can ult Nunu into a certain location so that it's almost instant with the damage and the slow. Nunu can start channeling, Rise can channel his ult into a certain location, and like the damage is almost instant when they land in the or end destination of Rise's ultimate. And number 10 on the list is an interaction that exists between Nasus and Callista where you would pick the Nasus into the Callista. So one of the major parts of Callista's kit is her passive and how mobile she can become with all the dashes that she has when she auto-attacks. And this is where Nasus comes in. Nasus, when he maxes his W ability, can slow the target to a great deal to up to a 95% slow at max rank. When Nasus W hits Callista, she can barely move, and it kind of makes Callista's uh, passive almost gone because she can barely move and that's a huge part of her kit her mobility so these were 10 interactions synergies that exist in league of legends i hope you enjoy the video make sure to comment down below what you would like to see next and i'd like to thank you for watching